records aren't necessarily your thing, but four straight shoutouts for Stefan, 400 scoreless minutes. Both records, can you address that a little bit, please? Um, yeah, I'll address it in the sense that when we made that announcement in the locker room, the first thing that Steph did is start pointing at all of his teammates and saying, no, it's you guys, it's you guys, it's you guys, because that's the kind of character that Steph has. Um, certainly when you talk about scoreless streaks, you know, it, 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 you know, it goes to the goalkeeper. Um, when you talk about scoring streaks, you know, Dempsey's 50th goal for this club, that's a, another individual stat on the opposite end, on the attacking end. Um, but the team, front to back, defended well, including Clint in front of Steph. And from Steph going the opposite direction, the team was helping us, you know, get the ball front to back, Give the give Dempsey his one chance that he needed. So I think the overall team performance in in all of the you know statistical categories uh, is something that that team in there, that group of players, really believes in. You know, we always hear it from Steph, but you 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 listen to Clint on all his interviews. He's he's a team guy, and he will he will do whatever it takes to help this team win. And I think that's what uh, really is important for me in breaking a team record of 400, you know, 400 plus or minus minutes. Uh, that that's really important because it's a team. It's a team record. Matt, uh, with Jordan providing the assist, what kind of impact does it have on your staff whenever he's able to be consistently threatening on the line? Well, he, he got that assist from the right side, and you know we had we had talked about when Nico takes a corner kick way over here, will Jordan just recover here? And he was pretty effective from there, so it gave us some ideas as a coaching staff. Hey, can we you know move pieces around and stuff like that to get Jordy untracked? Um, but the ball was tremendous. It was a it was a tremendous ball across, and Clint you know does what he did. So um, we are very pleased with Jordan's effort, uh, and again the statistics. You know, sometimes, to Mark's point, I'm not always big on stats, but, you know, Jordan got his first official assist, but he's been assisting the team and scoring goals the entire year. Jackson. There's a lot of games still remaining, but does it mean anything mentally for you, for the guys in the locker room, to be tied atop the Western Conference now? Uh, I think I said this at training the other day. Ask me when there's, like, five or six left. Um, right now, yes, obviously it's a, it's, a, it's a nice way to end a Saturday afternoon. Um, but there's some other games that are going to take place later this afternoon that might, that, that might interrupt that uh, being in first place. So what we're doing is just making sure that we take care of our stuff, our business. We have a, you know, a, a favorable schedule down the stretch. And we'll just see what happens. We'll just, we'll just if we take care of the games here at home, we'll, we'll see what happens. Right. Coach Ozzie made his return tonight. What kind of boost did he provide when you checked in? Great. You guys, you could see the spirit of the group, you know, just rise up. And then, you know, his composure uh, on the ball uh, was great. It helped us because we weren't having a very good possession game today. So I think he came and helped us in those critical moments. And then you can tell he's, you know, a little feisty there at the end. Things got a little heated and stuff like that. So that's that's the kind of game Aussie enjoys playing, actually. So it was great to have him back. John, during this uh, this shutout streak, how, how important is some of the consistency of the lineups you've been able to put out there, played into it, especially with the back line and now with Kelvin? Absolutely. Yeah, Jeff, thanks for asking that. It's a that's an astute question. Um, it's been a massive help. I mean, look, Chad Marshall, <clears throat> three-time Defender of the Year, does great, right? A lot of individual accolades for that guy. Ramon Torres is a beast, you know. He does a really great job. Uh, we all know how good Jovan Jones is, okay? Until we had that fourth piece of the puzzle, you know, we were a little disjointed. And so having some familiarity on a back four is always super important. Now, what I would add to that, Jeff, is this. So when Nuhu steps on the field, he does a great job, right? Gives me the flexibility to push Joven up a line. When Brad was out there, he gave us some of that senior leadership that helped us. So I think overall, 
our team defending, if we're looking at a unit, like a back four unit, I think has been pretty good. When we've had the right guys on the field, I think it's been pretty good. Other questions? All right, you have one? You're okay for now? Follow us, Ryan, I saw you. Yeah. Coach, uh, Dempsey now with six goals in his last five MLS matches as a coach. Is, uh, are you able to notice when a guy is in really good form? Is that something you can pick up on? Yeah, just by the mood he's in right now. <laughs> I mean, he's in a pretty good mood, so yes. Um, well, we, we've always, it, it, Dave Tenney, who does a great job with, with, you know, getting the guys physically right. We have a plan for Clint. Uh, it's a long-term plan where we understand the importance of, you know, our team and what he brings to our team and also the other competition that he's in, which is the, you know, the national team stuff. So... Between the three of us, we've come up with a plan, and Clint has bought into the plan, and he's training well, and he's on a, you know, uh, he's in a good space mentally. I mean, the guys come back from a lot of, uh, a lot of adversity, so yeah, we, we we can see it, we can see it in training. Matt Johnson, what did Casey do to make it difficult today? Uh, another good question, because i got to give Peter credit. I mean, everybody talked about the narrative of a tired team and everything, and their, their, their group of guys played really well. I thought at many points in the game, their possession game was better than ours. So you have to give them credit. They put us under pressure. Uh, you know, maybe the final product wasn't there for them, but they certainly made us chase the ball for extended periods of time which affected the way we actually attack because the guys were tired because they were chasing the ball and then we really didn't have our attacking movements going as, as, as good as we should have. So credit to them. I mean, they came out, they had a bunch of young, hungry kids on the field and they, and they did well. They did very well. In terms of shuffling around and filling different roles, is that something Jordan could have done as a rookie? Is that part of his game that you've seen him improve uh, throughout his time in Seattle? Uh, if you're talking about just like as a striker versus left wing, yeah, and on either side, yeah, I mean, Jordy's, Jordy's positives are he's a strong kid, he's fast, he's, you know, he's a goal scorer, I mean, he's got a ton of quality, so wherever you might put him on the field, he's always going to have some impact, um, you know, back to his impact in the games, I mean, a couple of times today, and then certainly that first burst in the three uh, third minute in Minnesota he just puts defenses on notice when he blows by that first defender and they're like going oh, oh my god what just happened that kind of sets the tone for the rest of the game so I think his contributions have been good wherever we put him on the field and you know certainly if you're talking about his production and the statistics again yeah they might not be up as high as they were his first year but he's still con contributing in many different ways